All right, in this video, we're gonna tackle the concept of related rates. Related rates is a really useful application of differentiation. This concept will use the idea introduced in implicit differentiation, but in a little bit different way. In our first example here, we're given this situation, we have two planes approaching a small airport. We have one plane that is approaching from westbound at 120 miles per hour. We have another plane that's headed northbound towards the airport at 150 miles per hour. The question that we're being asked is how fast is the di distance between those two planes changing when the first plane is 180 miles from the airport and the second plane is 225 miles from the airport? As with all word problems in mathematics, there's a lot going on here. We need a way to break this down. I highly recommend in almost all related rates questions, unless they give you some specific equations up front, that you create a picture or a visual image of what's going on, and then you start relating the different values in the situation. In this case right here, I'm being asked about the difference, the distance, excuse me, between these two planes. And so right away, I'm going to give the distance between these two planes a value, I'm gonna use a capital D right here. And in this case, and you can see this from the picture, um, I, mean, I can relate the distances these planes are from the airports and think of this as a right triangle, which will be very useful because then I can either use the Pythagorean theorem or some kind of right triangle trigonometry to solve the problem. Before I go any further, I do want to label the rest of this. I'm gonna think of this as a right triangle. I want the distance this first airplane that's headed westbound, I'm gonna label that value X. It doesn't matter what I use, but I want the distance this plane is from that airport to be X, because it's a horizontal, at least as I've drawn it here. And then this distance right here, the second plane, that distance I'm gonna call Y. The next thing I always do is I extract what they're asking me to figure out. In this case right here, they're asking me for how the distance between the, ch the planes is changing. Importantly, they're not asking me just to find the distance, but the rate of change of the distance. Now, the first thing that I always think about are what would the units be of this rate of change? Well, in this case right here, if we look at the rates of change of the plane's distances from the airport, they're all in terms of miles per hour. So the first thing that I figure out is that this distance that I'm trying to figure out must be, as far as a rate of change, it must be in miles per hour. Then I want to write that rate in terms of differentials. In this case right here, I'm looking for the change in the distance over hours, but more specifically, I'm looking for the change in the distance over time because hours is a unit of time. Being the first example, this will feel a little bit weird. Where did the DT come from? But again, when I read this, this is the change in the distance between the planes as I've labeled D right here over the change in time. And I'm using the change in time in my denominator because my units are hours. The next thing I look for in my information is what I'm given. Now importantly, and you'll see the relationship to what we just did, is that when I find rates, I'm going to write them in this way. So first up, I am told that this airplane is moving westbound towards the airport at 120 miles per hour. In this case, because I've labeled the distance between this plane and the airport as X, that would be dx dt, or the distance, the rate of the distance in terms of time. And this is a really important trick, is that that distance, or that rate, excuse me, would be negative 120 miles per hour. The reason that rate is negative is because the distance is decreasing as this plane approaches the airport. In the same way, I can write a rate for the, how the, the distance of this northbound plane is changing. That would be dy dt, or the change in the distance from this plane is to the airport over time. And that would be negative 150 miles per hour. We are also told that that plane is 180 miles from the airport at the distance we're looking for, and this plane will be 220. Those are just the values of X and Y in the instance that we're looking at. So in this case, we have X equals 180 miles and Y equals 225 miles. Last piece of information that we know that wasn't given from the actual problem, but was given from our picture, 
we discussed that we were looking at this as a triangle. I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem here, thinking of this as a bigger right triangle. What I know is that the relation between this distance, this distance, and this distance must be within the Pythagorean theorem, which is x squared plus y squared equals d squared. Finding this equation right here is often the most crucial part of a related rates problem. Also to say, I chose this relationship opposed to some trigonometric relationship because this is the relationship that relates the three values that I'm looking at. All right, now comes the real calculus fun. What I'm going to do in order to get some kind of relationship between the rates that I have, and now again, what I'm relating is the change in this airplane's distance from the airport, the change in this airplane's distance from the airport, and the, the distance between the two planes. So what I'm going to do is take this relationship between those variables, and I'm going to differentiate with respect to time, or hours in this case. All right, now I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time. In this case right here, x, y, and d are all values that vary with respect to time, so none of them are constant. That's first and foremost an important thing. Second, when I differentiate each of these terms, because I'm taking the derivative with respect to a value that's not shown here, and none of these terms have a t in it, I need to think about implicit differentiation. For example, when I differentiate with respect to t of x squared, I use the power rule to get 2x, but then I need to use the chain rule to multiply that by the derivative of x, or this inner function right here, to get dx dt. The exact same thing is going to happen in this next term right here. Using the power rule, I get 2y to the 1 power, and the chain rule has me do dy dt afterwards. And again, these little pieces, again, might still feel kind of strange to you, but the reason that they're showing up is because I'm differentiating with respect to time. In a second, I'll go back and talk about why the heck did I choose to differentiate with respect to time. Lastly, on the other side of this equation, I do exactly the same thing, applying the power rule and then multiplying by dd dt using the chain rule. Now, before I move forward and try to solve this equation, it's important to say why I actually differentiate with respect to time. The main reasoning here was because of these rates that I saw. The rates that I was given and the rates I was being asked for in this problem related a distance over time. So if I differentiate each of these distances over time, I knew I would get these factors out. And that's really important because now I have an equation with which I can plug in the information about the speeds of this plane, and those relate in some way to the distance between the planes. And not only the distance between them, but the rate of change of the distance between those planes. What I'm going to do now is first, well, before I go any further, I can divide both sides of this equation by two to get rid of these factors of two which makes things a little bit nicer. Now what I'm going to do are plug in the values that I know, and if I can, then solve for dd dt. Looking through my current equation right here, I have values for x, dx dt, y, dy dt. I know that I'm looking for dd dt, or the rate of change between the planes over time, but I don't know the actual distance at the time given. This is something now I need to go back. I need a value for d. The way to figure this out is I've been told that at, I'm looking for at the situation when x is 180 and y is 225. I simply plug 180 and 225 into the Pythagorean theorem and solve this equation for d. And when I do that, I found that the distance between the planes, when the first plane is 180 miles from the airport, the second plane is 225 miles from the airport, that the distance between those two planes is 288.14 miles. So there's nothing left to do now, but now plug in those values and see if I can solve for the, the rate of change of the distance between those planes. So what I've done here is I plugged in 180 in for x, I plugged in negative 120 for my dx dt, I plugged in 225 in for my y, and a negative 150 for my dy dt, and finally my 288.14 miles for the distance between the planes still times that rate right there. Now all I need to do is do some arithmetic and, and a little bit of algebra to solve for dd dt. 
So here I've simply just evaluated this left-hand side right here, and now to find dd dt, I'm going to simply divide both sides by the 288.14. And this gives me, um, over here on this side is negative 192.09, and that equals dd dt. The last thing is I need to make sure that I understand what this is meaning and see if it, it answered what I was being asked. Again, I was being asked for the distance or the rate of change between the two planes, our dd dt. It's negative, and actually I would expect it to be negative, as as these planes approach the airport, the negative means the distance between those two planes is getting smaller. In this case, I analyze this by saying that the distance between the planes is decreasing at 192.09 miles per hour. And again, it's miles per hour because the distances are being measured in miles and the time is being measured in this case in hours. Again, to say is the negative in this case, for the negative for a rate of change means that over time, the distance between these two planes is decreasing. And so again, the way that I would analyze that is by saying it's decreasing at 192.09 miles per hour.